Would you all please stand? <laughs> We're going to do the prayer first. How can you not pray after singing something like that? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And it is the presence of the Lord. And if that presence was not here, then none of this matters. So we ask with all that we are that you would meet us here, Lord, in a very real way. That you would speak to our hearts and lives. That we would come into this place, not by chance, not by accident, but by divine invitation from you. Lord, may we leave this place different than when we entered it. May all we do and say in these moments bring glory and honor to your name. We love you, Father. In your precious name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We are thankful you're here with us here today. If you're visiting, uh, inside your bulletin, there's a bookmark. You can put your information there. We hope that you will do that. Also, on the back part of that is a place for you to put any prayer needs that you might have. Um, if you're watching our service online, uh, we're thankful that you're doing that. Um, if you have any prayer needs, simply email us, and we will um, add those prayer needs to our uh, list of prayer needs. Um, as far as announcements goes, today, right after the service, we're going to have a brief church council meeting. Just want to talk about our 150th anniversary, um, which is uh, this year, if you can believe it. Um, the Leesburg uh, Church actually started in 1824, but then it was not called the Leesburg Methodist Church. It was called a part of a church on the charge of the Starksville Charge. And so um, in 1874, the railroad moved to Leesburg. Leesburg was made a, a city, and Starksville unfortunately went away. Uh, because the railroad did not go through Starksville, it went through here. And 1874 was when Leesburg started, and also the Leesburg Methodist Church started. So this year will be our 150th birthday, if you can believe that. Um, and that old sanctuary, that the chapel that we have our early service in, um, that is the original building. It was uh, renovated and remodeled in 1956, um, and then there were some additions later on there. But um, we've got a long history, and I'm excited and we want to share that with church council, make sure everybody's on the same page. And so just a brief meeting right after the service here in the sanctuary. Um, church council is open for everybody. You don't have to be on church council to be part of that. So if you're here and you say, I'd like to hear about that, then just simply stay and we're going to have our meeting. Um, and then we'll be done so everybody can go get something to eat. Tomorrow evening at uh, 6.30, if you've wanted to be a part of church choir um, but haven't had the chance... This is it. We want you to come tomorrow evening at 6.30. Isn't it good to have the choir back? Yeah. Amen? Yeah, come on. Um, it is good to be back in action. It's good to have them up here. Um, we're going to start back tomorrow at 6.30. And I hope if you want to be a part of choir, you'll come be a part of that. If you have any questions, see Denise after the service. She'd be happy to answer anything that you might have question-wise. Um, and then you'll see uh, finance meeting is this Thursday um, at 6 o'clock. Um, also, you'll see the note about Gospel Project and some other meetings that are coming up I want you to pay attention to. Don't forget, next Sunday after the service, we have our Covered Ish meal. Um, so I hope you'll be a part of that. We're doing that once a month on the second Sunday. And so I hope you'll come be a part of that time of fellowship together. Um, I told them at the early service, if you want to, you can come to church, go home, cook your stuff, come back. We have some folks who do that. Um, but it's just a good time to be together, um, and that's, again, next Sunday. Finally, I want to lift up Sone um, Sunday evening with the neighbor. It is a ministry in Albany. Um, it's a ministry that is housed at Albany um, First Methodist Church. Um, every Sunday, they feed the homeless. Um, there's anywhere from 175 to 200 people that are fed on those nights. Um, our church has the blessing of doing that twice a year. Um, and I just want to say, if you want to be a part of a ministry where you see people who are in need and, and you feel the, the, the impact of the ministry that you're doing, being a part of that night when we serve them is a big thing. And so I'd love for you to be a part of that. Um, I'd love for you to uh, come. If you have any questions, you can see um, who's here that's in charge of that. Miss Carlin can talk to you about that. Um, and, and it's just a good, good event to be a part of. Um, then one last thing, today is Communion Sunday, and I will tell you that during Communion, we come to the altar, and we leave our altar fund. 
And people will leave a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, however much God leads you to, to lead at the altar. And 100% of what you leave on Communion Sunday goes to our altar fund, which we use to help people to pay power bills, light bills, all sorts of different things. We have criteria for that. Um, you have to be a Lee County resident. Um, we only help a person once a year, so we're not trying to habitually help people. But I will say that fund is getting low. Um, we are lower on that fund than we ever have been. So today, a, a, as you come for communion, if God leads you to give to that, that, that's a good thing that we need help with, and I want to lift that up to you, okay? All right, with that being said, Ms. Carden will come and lead us in our opening song. All right, good morning. Uh, we're going to start our, um, this part of our service off with a great hymn, My Hope is Built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And, of course, that's what we're celebrating today through communion and what he did for us, saved our lives that way. So uh, let's stand. We'll sing all these verses. It'll be on the screen. standing we're going to uh, recite our affirmation of faith I think it'll be on the screen if not it's on page 691 uh, in your hymnal and this is our Apostles Creed Are you ready? <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
seated. As we come now for a time of prayer, um, I do want to lift up some folks to you, and then we're going to have our backpack blessing. Um, we're going to be praying over our backpacks. Um, but please just remember um, in your prayers, um, John Smith, who is going through treatment for skin cancer. Also, Tommy Patterson, who has found out he has lymphoma, will be going through radiation treatments as well. Um, also, we want to remember Steve Phillips, um, who is uh, dealing with prostate cancer. Um, and we'll keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Um, I am still waiting to hear about from Mayo Clinic um, with my own uh, prostate cancer, and we'll be going to see them hopefully soon. Um, so be praying for that as well. And then finally, um, pray for our retired teachers group. Um, they lost a dear friend, um, Sylvia Van, passed away um, this past Friday, Saturday. I couldn't remember which day it was, but um, longtime part of that group longtime friends of many people here. Um, she'll be missed in our community. And maybe you had her as a teacher um, and she made a difference in your life. Pray for her um, family as well as they deal with this loss. And when we uh, receive information on funeral, uh, we'll pass that on so people can have that information. Um, so please keep those folks in prayers. We have many more on our prayer list. And now we're gonna come to a time we like to do um, every start of the school year. And that's bless these school bags. Now, I don't know whose bag this is, but this bag represents a child, right? And we have a bunch of young people uh, right here. And we've got tags that we're going to put on these backpacks. Um, and we want to, that tag is a reminder that you've been prayed for. And it's also a reminder who you belong to. And it's not the Leesburg Methodist Church, right? It's God, and we're going to pray for a great school year. We're going to pray for protection. Uh, we're going to pray for teachers, uh, for patience, and for uh, a stamina. Uh, I, I know it, it, it's the start of a year, and we've got a lot of different schools represented here. We have home schools represented here. And so um, just a lot of things that we need to be praying for as a community. Some of us have uh, kids going to college. And, and we bought two laptops yesterday, which about gave me a heart attack. Because um, uh, we've got double the college expense. And so, uh, um, but they're going to be moving on Friday. And, and maybe your, yours will be moving as well. But um, we just want to have a time of prayer. So what I'd like to do, if you're a student or parents of students, um, or if you're a teacher, I want you to stand. All right. Now, if you're not standing, I want you to reach your hand out towards them, and we're going to be praying for them. Backpacks. Bring backpacks. If you don't have them, bring them up here. Bring your backpacks up here. If you got your backpack, bring it up here. Yeah, just put it right up here. We're going to have to move these for communion, but, but, we'll, communion, but, but we'll put them up there. All right. Right, Holly Ann's got something she wants to say, so yeah, and then we'll get back up. <laughs> but that gives me time to move these for communion, so that's good.
everybody's going to take this year. It's a great word. And I hope that you get one of these to put on your student's backpack when we're done. And if you're a teacher, you have a book bag or a satchel or something. I want you to get one as well to make sure that you know you're being prayed over to, as well. Because what everything Holly Ann said about our students, I think it applies to, to them as well. Teachers that are doing it every single day. So, um, again, if you're a teacher or student or parent, stand up. And if you're there, put your hands out because uh, this, this is what we're, we're praying for, for these folks. Um, let's pray. God, I just thank you so much for our students. I thank you so much for our teachers. I thank you so much for this new school year. And Lord, I just pray blessings on all of these that are standing. The parents who trust the teachers and the school system with their children. The children who are being taught and, and, and grow into the human beings you're going to be. And the teachers that give up of their time and effort um, to love these students and, and to minister to them as teachers. So we pray, pray for protection this year. We pray for your hand to be in the school system, whether they want you there or not. And Lord, we just pray blessings this year for our students, our teachers, and parents. We pray all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, so after the service, we'll have these. Uh, so please get you a tag, and we'll put those um, on your backpacks. All right, Carmen. <laughs> Let's stand back up. <laughs> Krista's leading us in standing this morning. I know. All right. That was, oh, that was my favorite Bible verse. I love it. All right. Uh, we're going to sing Amazing Grace. Good time to sing it. We couldn't do anything without that amazing grace of the Lord that he pours out on us all. Uh, there's six verses, so take a deep breath and let's sing Amazing Grace. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of your blessings. We pray that you'd use these gifts that are given back to you out of the abundance of what you've given. Use them for your kingdom's work through us, your church, and this community of faith. And all these things, we give you the praise and glory. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. <laughs> You can remain standing. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So I, I just feel like compelled to say this. Um, last weekend we were the church here um, handing out backpacks. And I just want to thank Polly Ann for all she does because it has been a beautiful day. And I'm I pray that there's a Holly Inn at my grandkids' churches. Um, I want to thank her for all she does. So, um, we're going to sing a song called Church, Take Me Back. And um, the words, you know, Miss Carlin's always talking about the words of this song. And y'all pay attention to the words of this song um, because it's about being the church like we were last weekend and just being there for each other. And, um, you know, the church lots of times gets a bad rap from people that our church hurt. Um, but this is about the church and being the church. There was a time that I swore I would never go back. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running, I was searching, but every place I turned for healing left me more broken than the last. Take me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher and a verse where they see me at my worst, to the love I had at first. Oh, I want to go to church. 
tried to walk on my own, but I wound up lost. Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross. It's not a trophy for the winners. It's a shelter for the sinners. And it's right where I belong. Take me back to the place that feels like home. To the people I can depend on. To the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher and a verse. Where they see me at my worst. To the love I had at first. Oh, I want to go to church. I want to go to church. Oh, more than an obligation, it's our foundation, the family of God. I know it's hard, but we need each other. We're sisters and brothers. Oh, to the place that feels like home to the people I can depend on to the faith that's in my bones take me back to a preacher and a verse where they see me at my worst to the love I had at first oh, I want to go to church oh I want to go to church I want to pump that song in to everybody's mind every Saturday night <clears throat> when you're getting ready. <clears throat> so you can say, hey, you know, I think I want to go to church. Um, I do want to say something about the back to school bash. Um, we, I counted the cards. We had 295 cards, which each card represented a, a student. And I think we gave away 294 book bags, maybe a few, one or two more. Um, it was just an amazing thing. Uh, I hope we plan for, yeah, yeah, that's fine. She's got a lot on her, and, but, but we will have pictures because they took a bunch of pictures. And so you'll be able to see it. But it was just phenomenal. And we made some changes from last year to this year that were very helpful and, and I think we've got some ideas of what we want to maybe do differently. But every year it's been more and more folks. Um, and I, I think, I don't know if there was any Albany folks. I think there probably maybe some, but I didn't hear. But it was a lot of Lee County folks. And, and these were people that needed help. And so it was just a phenomenal day. I can't thank everybody enough for volunteering. I can't thank Holly Ann enough for, for doing the things. Nancy went to different and got uh, money from different businesses and it, it's just a haul hands on deck and, and it's just a blessing to do that with other churches in our community and do something meaningful that's that's what church is all about and so I, I just thank you all for for the work that you did and uh for for just being such a blessing yes miss carlin And I can't, I don't even know how many underwear and socks we gave away. I mean, that was, you count 294 times however many pieces you gave them. I mean, that was, yeah, five a piece. I mean, that's, that was, a, that was awesome. So what a, what a blessing uh, that was. But so today we're starting a new sermon series. And, and I think it's fitting that today our focus is going to be on um, the marks of a healthy church. 
And we're going to focus in on uh, three different, four different areas of focus um, that a healthy church incorporates. Um, there's a book by uh, Mark Denver, D-E-V-E-R, Dever, and it's called Nine Marks of a Healthy Church. We're not, it's, a, it's an excellent book, and I would, I would encourage you to get that if you care about your church, you care about whether our church is a healthy church or not. Um, we're not going to focus on the nine things, but the four things we are going to focus on, I think, are incorporated in the nine things that, that Denver, ta- Denver talks about. Um, and, and I think it's important for us to use what we're looking at to take stock of who we are. Now, I'll tell you, I think we are a healthy church. Are we perfect? No, uh, no church is perfect. That may be what we're, we're shooting for, um, but, we're, but we're not there yet. So over the next four weeks, we're going to take these areas of focus. This is not all of them by any means, but these are four important, I think, areas to focus on as a healthy church. Now, I want to say to be a healthy church, we've got to be healthy people, right? Because the church isn't this building. The church is all of us. And so as we think about these areas of focus, they need to be areas of focus in our lives. If we're going to be a part of this church, if we're going to be um, active in the ministry of what God is doing in this community of faith, we want our church to be healthy. But it can't be healthy if we're not healthy. And so for all of us, I want us to take stock of our church, but I think first we need to look in the mirror and take stock of ourselves. Are these focuses areas that are in our lives as well as our church's life? And so first and foremost, I think as we think about areas to focus on, the most important area we can focus on is a Christ-centered focus. So focusing up is what we're focused on today. As a church, we're going to be taking Holy Communion. I can't think of a better way to focus in on Christ and God and what he's done uh, than than this moment here at the altar. But if we are going to be a healthy church, we got to be focused up. And to be focused up, we got to be Christ-centered. So I'm going to be looking at some different passages of Scripture. I would encourage you to write them down so that you can go back and look at them later. So... John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I have this dill plant that I've had for a while. And it was sitting out by my garden and I haven't really done anything with it. Krista got a new dill plant um, and a tower of herbs. And so this one's just kind of been hanging out. Well, Earlier on, maybe a month ago, I went out there and there were all these um, black swallowtail butterfly caterpillars on the dill. And they were eating that thing down, man. It was like just stems coming out. And I thought, this thing is going to die, but I want to see what these butterflies look like, so I'm going to leave them alone. And these little caterpillars were gnarly. They had like spikes coming out of them and, and they were all over it. I mean, they were all over it. And so I thought, this thing's dead meat. But it didn't die. In fact, it's growing back out. And right now, it's got beautiful yellow little lace-looking flowers on top of it. And it's it's alive and well. And that's because the caterpillars did not kill the vine. They did not kill the thing that gives that plant life. And we can't because our vine is Jesus. The only way that we can lose sight of that is if we get disconnected from Jesus. The vine, the branches don't fuel the plant. The vine does. And so Jesus should be the center of all that we are. And as a church, our focus is always going to be Jesus. But to be the church that is always focused on Jesus, we as individuals had better be focused on him. So that everything we do, choices we make, things that we want to aspire to, all filter through him before but it's almost like having glasses on and etched in those glasses is Jesus are you Christ centered what does that mean that means literally everything you do as a person filters through your relationship with Jesus how is this job that I'm about to take going to affect my relationship with Jesus 
How is this friendship that I have, how is that affected with my relationship with Jesus? How is this purchase, this big purchase that I'm going to make, how does it impact my relationship with Jesus? I'm not kidding. Every single thing you do filters through him. That is a Christ-focused person. As parents, we need to be Christ-focused on what we do with our children. Everything. We live in a world where Christianity is falling away. In, I think it was 1980, they did a survey and there were 3,000 Wiccan temples in America. Now there are 44,000 Wiccan temples in America. Church attendance is down across the board in every denomination. What are we teaching our children? Are we Christ-centered? If we are going to be the hub where Christ is lifted up, every single one of us need to be centered in on him. So what does that mean? That means things begin to change in us. That means we are different. We are not the same. God uses things to make us who we need to be, and we need to be more like Christ. Mark 10, 42 through 45 Calling themselves to him, Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. But it is not this way among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall be servants, and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be slaves to all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many." The more we are Christ-centered, the more like Christ we become. The more we see how he lived his life, the more we're humbled. Friends, we live in a society that is not humble. Anything but. And I am afraid in the coming days, in the coming years, as the world turns just the way the Bible says it will, there will be humbling And we as Christians should understand what that looks like because we as Christians have come to serve and not be served. The back to school bash is a wonderful example of what that looks like. The clothes closet and food pantry, it's a wonderful example of what that looks like. Serving others. And as a Christian, as God begins to take hold of our lives, one of the markers of transformation is that humbleness. No longer am I on top, but in a Christ-centered life, he is. Who is on the throne of your life? It better not be you. It better not be your children. It better not be any other thing. It's got to be him. If you want to be the best husband, if you want to be the best wife, if you want to be the best mother or father, Jesus had better be center of your life. And I'm telling you, if he's not, there are struggles. And if he's not the center of the Leesburg Methodist Church, we won't be able to do anything. When he is the center, God works out all things are good. Secondly, a healthy church not only is Christ-centered, but it's intentional in its biblical teaching from the pulpit and from other places within the life of the church. Friends, God's word needs to be our foundation. Matthew 7, 24 through 27 Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. And yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and it fell and great was its fall. What is our foundation, church? It better be the word of God. Because that is the word of God to us. That's how we know God. That's we know how we know who God is. In a marriage relationship, if you do not communicate with one another, your marriage will not be solid. Now, one thing I learned that I did not know is that women 
want to talk at the end of the day. Or at least my woman does. I hadn't seen her all day. She's had everything go on in her life. I'd have everything that goes on in my life. And when we first got married, I was like, I'm not really, I don't want to talk, you know. I, I've been talking all day. But she's like, la, 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 la. You know, she wants to tell me everything. And that's great. I'm glad she wants to talk to me. And I've come to realize those conversations are some of the most important conversations you can have. And if you come to me for marriage counseling, I'm going to talk to you about why those are so important and you need to listen to one another. Because if I don't listen to her, if I don't know what's going on in her life, if I don't understand it, then how can me and her be co-partners in this life together? If you don't talk to God, if you don't listen to God, if you don't read his word, if it's not the center of who you are, how can you be uh, uh, someone who looks to God? You won't know him because you won't know his word. When he speaks through his word, I want you to hear it. I don't want you to miss it because it's a word you need to hear for your life, but it's also probably a word that somebody else needs to hear. So we center in on God's word. Why? Well, it is our foundation, and we don't want it to crumble. There's a hurricane possibly coming, and and from what it looks like, uh, Matt was showing me the image, that sucker's going to go out in Savannah and then come right back, and then come back again. Who knows what weather does, right? If it's a hurricane going up and potentially coming back down and potentially going back up, you'd better have a foundation in the home that you live in especially if you live in Florida if you don't you could be rebuilding your home all over again where is your house on the foundation of God secondly and I think this is so powerful Hebrews 4 12 and 13 for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we fall. How many of you have seen Forged in Fire? You, you know? Yeah, Forged in Fire. Some of y'all raising your hands. That's where they build those knives, swords, whatever it is. It fascinates me to watch those. Um, Hank, and, 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 and so it, it's just cool to think about stuff, making it. And, and so watch the show, two people end up being in the end, and, and, and they make this thing, and, and it's got a, they ask, will it cut? And so they cut, and, and, and it, it cuts. And uh, then the next thing, and this is not a good one, but it says, will it kill? And, and it's got to be, do whatever it's called to do. Did you just read what we read in, in, in Hebrews just then? Listen to it again, church. And there, it says, listen to this about the, for the word of God is living, active, sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow. The word of God is sharp and it pierces the heart of men. It's sharp and it changes who we are by the way it cuts through us. It says things about us. It moves us. It transforms us. Because as a Christian, there's one thing that we understand. We are not going to stay the same. We are new creations in Christ. Can I just be honest with you? If you're here today and you've said some prayer when you were 10 years old, 12 years old, but your life has never changed, I want you to make sure you're with Christ. Because a Christian is somebody who's been transformed by him. If you have not been transformed, if you are able to do things that you used to do and it not matter to you, something's wrong. Because Jesus in us as Christians will not let sin go without this gnawing in us saying, that's not right. Listen, if you feel that when you do something you shouldn't, that's an amen, thank goodness. I'm not talking about some big, deep shame. I'm talking about guilt. 
Guilt's healthy. If you do something you shouldn't do, something inside of you says, I shouldn't have done that. That's good. That's Christ given to us, letting us know we are not the same. His word is that sharpening thing that lets us know what's right and what's wrong. It's the sharpening of saying, hey, I need to be more like Jesus. How do I become more like Jesus? This is what Jesus did. This is what he looked like. And the more we involve ourselves in that, the more focus we have on him and the more healthy we as a people and as a church become as we try to be who God is calling us to be. So finally, so we have to be Christ-centered, biblically-centered, studying God's word. And we've got a lot of Sunday school classes and every single one of them is is focused in on God's word. It's not about self-help. It's not about being a, a better person because we can't be a better person without him. Amen? So finally, a spirit-filled time of worship. Worship is more than just ritual. It's an encounter with God. In worship, we are inviting the Holy Spirit to dwell with us. And through the music we sing and focus on, God Psalm 22, 1 through 3. Listen to this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Far from my deliverance are the words of my groaning. Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I have no rest. Verse 3. Yet you are holy, who enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Or in other translations, God inhabits praises of his children. Friends, when you and I come to this place, whether it's the early service or whether it's this, we have got to get beyond something inside of us that says, I don't like hymns. I don't like praise songs. And we've got to get to the heart of what the hymn is saying. Did you hear the songs we sung this morning? Did you listen to every single word? Because let me tell you something. As far as our new hymn book, every single hymn in that hymn book has been studied theologically. It has been over, just overcast with scrutiny to make sure that each hymn is pointed to God. That it is theologically, accurately praising God and nothing else. I don't have a doubt about our new hymn book. And our praise team scrutinizes every song that we sing to make sure that the praise songs we sing are songs that are pointed to him and not to us. Because praise and worship is not about us. It's all about him. The focus is not on what we like or what we want. It's on him. And bringing glory and honor to his holy name. And the Bible tells us that when we come and we praise, he inhabits the people who are here. He is lifted up. He is glorified. And that's what we're called to do. In a church that is focused up in worship is a healthy church. But it cannot be that unless we are a people that are focused up. And we long to worship the King of Kings. Now listen, there's a whole cultural thing going on. Where people go to these big churches And they go in and they have a lot of worship. And they feel good about themselves. And they leave. But nothing has changed within them. It's more of a concert than it is a worship experience. And any concert, Christian concert that I've ever been to, when it's just been a concert, I've left that place saying that was nice. But it was just a concert. Now I could go to any concert, country music, whatever, and just go and enjoy the music. But I'm going to a Christian concert. I want to be an experienced worship. And those artists that incorporate this idea of worship, now that is powerful. Back in January of last year, when, well, this year, well, this year, it seems like a year ago, when we went to Passion, the Atlanta Falcon Stadium, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, was packed. And it was worship church. I can't describe it. It was not concerts. It was not about these artists. In fact, there was one point where where they turned all the lights down and the guy singing and leading worship. You couldn't even see his face. It was powerful. 
focus in on him. He inhabits the praise of his people. So how do we do this? One, we make prayer a priority and face as we plan worship. So every Monday, I try to hand the praise team, Sunday worship team, which the Sunday worship team is made up of the praise team, the choir, um, the piano players, and they have what my scripture is most of the time, or they have the topic of what I'm going to be talking on. And so they know. And so my expectation is that they're going to pray over that, and those that are picking hymns are going to start looking at the hymns, and, and their hymn, I want the hymn to match with what we're talking about in the service. The praise team looks at praise songs. What praise songs are going to go? I want them to be praying. And I've added the choir to it because I want the choir, the team, to be praying who is involved in that. Because together we are praying. But listen, you've got a job. You may not be getting that email, but I pray for you is that every single week you're praying for Sunday. Lord, I want to experience you. Lord, let everything that is on me, that is weighing me down, I'm giving you these burdens because I want to come into this place and I want to be with my brothers and sisters. But more than anything, I want you to indwell this place so that you move with us. And I don't leave this place the same person I was when I came in. Because I have been in the presence of God. And I would love to have to buy curtains for your face so that when you leave the glow of God on you blinds people get your curtain at the end of the service just like Moses coming down off the mountain right how cool would that be I want you to know you've been with God not because of the preacher not because of how great our musicians are but because he was here and he spoke in a mighty way Friends, everything we do from the youth, children, everything is for the glory of God. And it is worship to him to tell him how awesome and amazing he is. So we pray, we focus in on that. Next, we as a worship team talk. What are we doing? Does this sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. Again, I pray that you will pray for the people that lead in worship. The choir. Do you know there are churches, a lot of churches that don't have choirs anymore? What we did this morning by opening up with that praise song, there's a sweet, sweet prayer. That song opens up the floodgates for worship. I'm thankful for our choir. I'm thankful for Denise and what she does and leading us. For you who take your time to be a part of it. Because your part of worship is pivotal. It's important. It's another avenue for us to connect with him and then finally we always need to make church a creative environment a place where people feel free to worship God so in this church service I want you to feel welcomed I hope people are welcoming you when you come in if you're a member here and you see a new face, I hope you run, you beat one another to go talk to that person and tell them how thankful you are that, that they're here. So we want to be a place where people are welcomed, feel like family. But I also think we need to be a place where people are free to worship. During the service, if you want to stand up and clap your hands, stand up and clap your hands. If you feel like you want to sit down and be, you know, introspective, that's fine. I want you to have the freedom to worship God the way you do. Now, I just want to say a note. That freedom in worship, there are some churches in different denominations that have speaking in tongues. And I just want to touch this just briefly. Now, speaking in tongues is biblical, okay? And there is a prayer language that people have. And when you read the biblical mandate of speaking in tongues, it's not talking about a prayer language. Prayer language is your thing. And I've had people pray over me in tongues, and, and that was a powerful thing. 
But speaking in tongues, there's guidelines. And so we talk about freedom in the worship of Jesus. Now, if God gives you a word in tongues and you stand up and you share that word, to be an interpreter. Somebody who stands up, not you, someone who stands up and shares that. Because I want you to understand, we have freedom, and, and I believe God could do that. But I believe God will use what he says in his word, going back to the focus of his word, to share whatever needed to be shared. So hear me. There's freedom. And I want you to raise your hands. I want you to sit. I want you to be quiet. Whatever you feel led to do. But I also want you to understand there's a biblical mandate for how we worship. And, and, and the most important thing is a clean heart and purity. And that's why in big churches where it's become a concert, we come in and we feel good about ourselves and then we go out and nothing's changed. In a true worship experience with God, we come in and we have an experience and that goes with us and we are changed transformed so are we a healthy church each one of you needs to take stock of your lives to say am i healthy first am am i the person i need to be because i'm a part of this church and i want this church to be a healthy church so the first part of being a healthy church is make sure our focus is up we do that by being christ-centered biblical-centered and spirit-filled worship that is being prayed over for transformation as we leave. Now, we're moving to this special time in our service, and I can't think of a better time to do this than to focus in on the Eucharist. So in this moment, we are going to come to this place, and we're going to take the elements of bread and wine. Now, in that moment, those are not We don't believe they actually become the body and the blood of Christ. But it's a representation of the fact that if you're a Christian, Christ is already in you. And you're reminded that he is. And you're reminded of the grace he's given to us by him taking our cross and our shame. And we come with a repentant heart. So there's good news. If you're here today and you say, you know, Lee, I've not been focused up in my life. I've been focused on me. And I want to be focused on him. This is a wonderful experience, a wonderful moment for you to come, set it clean, set the record straight, clean slate. From now on, I'm going to be focused on him. I'm going to be Christ-centered. I'm going to be biblically based in my life. And I'm going to worship in spirit and truth. And I'm going to make the worship service not about what I like, but about meeting him face to face. And I'm going to take that with me And I'm going to be the person, the man, the woman God is calling me to be. That's this moment for all of us. I had a seminary professor. I've told you this before. He said you should never have to do an altar call when you do communion. Because this is it. This is the moment when you surrender. If you never have, you ask for forgiveness if you need to be forgiven. And you get up and you do things differently. So friends, as we come to this place. This is open for everyone. If you're not a member of this church, it's okay. It's open for everyone. We just come with a repentant heart. So I pray that you would come with that repentant heart and that God would speak to you in a mighty way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we prepare our hearts for Holy Communion, I pray that you would meet us here. I pray that your spirit would pour out on these elements of bread and wine and that we would be for you, God, your body, and your hands and your feet in this world. May our focus be on you, Lord. May we be Christ-centered. May we understand and know your Bible as we read it more and more and more, and it becomes a part of us. And may, Lord, we prepare our hearts and lives for worship, and may it be spirit-centered, spirit-filled, as that spirit dwells in us. Lord, we want to be a healthy church. And we understand to be a healthy church, we need to be a healthy people. So meet us here at this table. We love you. In your name we pray, amen. As Larry comes forward on the night in which Christ met with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. That same night he took the cup as was the custom. 
And he held the cup up, but instead of dipping the bread, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink and remember me. They had never heard those words before. They probably didn't understand, but they would. They would come to understand. It would become a part of their worship and become a part of who they were, always being reminded of who Jesus is and what he's done for us. Always being reminded that grace is present and we are forgiven when we only ask. This is a moment for you to come to this table. Maybe get things right. Maybe you don't need to, but it's here. I pray that you will come and God to speak to your heart and life as we remember what Christ has done for us. Larry, this is the blood of Christ. All right, we're going to be doing communion by intention. So you simply come, they'll lay the bread in your hand, and you dip it in the juice. And if you want to come to the altar, it's open for you to do so. I pray that you will come as God leads.
So I'm about to pray, and we're going to close out the service. But we've got two more songs. If you want to sit and, and pray, if you're staying for the um, administrative council meeting we're going to have real quickly, um, then stay in worship. If you need to go, we understand. We've gone a little bit long. Um, but we're kind of, August is going to be camp meeting days. Remember how you used to do that in August? We'd have camp meeting style and, and go back to the old Cokesbury hymn if you were in. Um, uh, we used to do that in Plains and Preston and even in Douglas where I was a youth director. So um, we're kind of moving into the camp meeting days. And so they've got some great old songs, peppy songs to kind of close us out with. But, but I want to pray for us. So let's stand. And if you're going to stay and you want to worship, then remain standing. If you, if you want to stay and worship, yeah, that's fine too. Um, but remember, we're looking at what it means to be a healthy church. And our first focus, the most important focus, is God. We are focused towards Him. Christ-centered, biblically-based, spirit-filled worship. Focusing on Him. Now, we as a church can't be that if we as a people aren't. We need to begin to think about who are we focusing in on. Um, so let's pray. Lord God, as we kind of close out this time and we get ready to sing these last songs and, and, and we go out into our day, I just pray that you'd bless it, Lord. And that we would have opportunities to share, focus in on you, studying your word, whatever it is. And we'd be ready to be the people you've called us to be. We love you, Father. Thank you for being with us. In your name we pray. Amen. If you leave, leave quiet. Otherwise, we're going to be singing really loud. <laughs>
Gloria.